Okay, I'm going to talk today about a chi-squared test. Um, chi-squared tests are particularly useful for um, observations of frequency data. It works really well for behavioral data with animals. Um, and it's useful for data that tend to not be normally distributed or fall into what we call frequency categories. So the, this is the symbol for a chi-squared. And so there are a couple of types of chi-squared tests. I'm going to review in this video the goodness of fit test because it's the most simple. Um, they're both pretty simple, but they and they and both chi-squared tests use the same equation, which is chi-squared equals the summation of observed values minus expected values squared divided by expected values. So you have a series of observed values and you calculate what your expected values are and you plug them into this equation to get a result. You then use a, your degrees of freedom, you calculate degrees of freedom, and you can look that up on a statistical chart. And you can also quite readily do chi-squared analysis in JUMP and R as long as your data are set up to do that. So let's use an example. Say I decide to do an urban ecology project, and I'm curious if the birds in the neighborhoods around me over a fairly large area are preferring certain types of deciduous trees over others. Maybe there's something about the leaves of the trees that attract more insects and the birds like more or something. I might make some predictions about that. And so the first thing I want to know is how frequently are those trees occurring in my neighborhood? And I look, I decide to narrow down to just native trees. And this is what I observe in these, in the neighborhoods around me, across a suitably large area. I observe cottonwood, alder, and big leaf maple. And so I should specify we're talking about red alder and black cottonwood, okay? And so when I go out and survey these trees in the area, I determine that black cottonwood is about 10% of the proportion of the trees in that area that are deciduous native trees. We have 30% red alder and 60% big leaf maple. Okay, I then go and I go to lots of different trees in each one of these groups. And I do timed observations and I look to see birds visiting and feeding on these trees. And so I standardize things by timing my survey and also I make sure I'm replicating myself by visiting lots of different trees. And this is what I observe. I observe 50 foraging visits to cottonwoods, 60 visits to alder, and 90 to big leaf maple. I want to know, is that number of observations and the frequencies in these different groups, is that different than I would expect due to random chance? And so what I do is I sum up my numbers, 50 plus 60 is 110 plus 90 is 200, and I can then calculate my expected values. I'm going to try and make this a little bit closer. So I can do the whole equation based on these percentages. So 10% of 200 is 20. 30% of 200 is 60. And 60% 60 of 200 is 120. Make sure those add up to 200, yes, okay. And from this, I can start to build this equation. So I'll start to build the first part, observed minus expected here. So 20 minus 50 is 30, 60 minus 60 is zero, 90 minus 20 is negative 30. And then I build this up to be the numerator of this equation. Observe minus expected squared, right? And what I get is 30 times 30 is 900, this is going to be zero, and negative 30 times 30 is also 900. So now I have my numerator of my equation right here. Now I want to divide by my expected values. So 900 divided by 20, zero divided by 60, and 900 
divided by 120. Okay, and so when I do that, I can actually do, do some of these just by looking at them. So I can cancel out these zeros and 90 divided by two equals 45. This is going to equal zero. And then 90 divided by 12, I have to use a calculator to do that. But the answer is 7.5. And then I can add 45 and 75 together to get my chi-squared value, which is 52.5. So that's my chi-squared value. That's what we call the test statistic. Now I need to figure out if this is a significant result by looking at a probability table. And I can do that. I'll pull up the table in just a minute. But the first thing I need to know is my degrees of freedom. I just need that. And in the chi-squared test, for goodness of fit, it's the number of rows minus one, which in this case equals three minus one, which equals two. So I have two degrees of freedom. Now let me um, share a screen with you. Um, and it's a chi-squared table. And so you can see in this chi-squared table, you have um, the first column which says degrees of freedom. And so you can track that column down to the number two. And then if you move across that column, you can see an alpha of 0.1, an alpha of 0 0.05, and then even smaller alpha values. So these are probability values. We're looking for um, an alpha value of at least 0 0.05. And in this case, if I had a chi-squared result that was 5.9, so at an alpha of 0 0.05, I would need a chi-squared result of, of 5.991. My number is much larger. And so when you have these really large numbers, you know the probability is even smaller than what you're going to find on the table. Um, on the same table, for an alpha of 0 0.025, you would be getting an alpha of 7.37. And an alpha or a probability of 0 0.01, it would be an alpha of 9.2. So I can say confidently that this result I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. I can say with confidence that this re result is a p of smaller than 0 0.01, just by the hand calculation. And um, it's probably a very small probability. And if you look at these proportions, what you're seeing is no difference in the what you'd expect by chance on alder, but fewer birds foraging on big leaf maple and more birds foraging co on cottonwood. And so that's a chi-squared goodness of fit test.